Hi folks, Philip Andrews here from the Photoshop Elements team and in this session we're going to be looking at the RAW file format and looking in particular at the difference that you can get in the quality of your images by simply changing the way in which you capture your photos from say JPEG file format to the RAW file format. So to start us off let's look at these three files. One is JPEG and the other two are RAW files. And you can tell they're RAW files because they've got a slightly different naming scheme. You can see here it's .arw which signifies that they're Sony RAW files. You might be working with Nikon cameras in which case it'll have .nef or Canon cameras in which case the end of the file name will be .cr2 or .crw. So let's just select one of these images, right click and go down to edit with Photoshop elements. And the first thing you'll notice is that the image doesn't open up into the main editor space. It opens up into a second dialog and this is called the camera raw dialog. And essentially this is because when you capture in the raw file format you need to do a little bit of processing in order to prepare the raw file for it to be able to be used inside the basic editor workspace. So don't be scared when you see this open up. This is actually an indication that you are getting more control about the way your image is being processed. So normally this kind of processing will take place inside the camera. If you've selected the JPEG format, this processing that we're about to undertake inside this dialog will have been undertaken by your camera. But because you want to take a little more control, selecting the raw file format as the capture format will mean that you can actually perform this type of processing in the camera or dialog before going into the main editor space. Have a look on the right hand side you'll see a panel with all of our controls. In particular at the top we've got white balance controls and you'll see that the dialog duplicates the type of white balance controls that you have with your camera. So we could just go down and select daylight as a white balance entry for this particular image because it was shot under daylight. Alternatively we could go through and actually manually control the temperature. So this is the amount of blue or yellow in the image. If we move to the left hand side you'll see we add more blue to the photo. If we move it to the right hand side you see that we add more yellow to the photo. A second form of manual control is the tint slider that you can see sitting beneath that. In this case if we move it to the left you'll see that we add more green to the image or to the right more magenta to the image. This is particularly useful if you're photographing indoors under fluorescent or strip lighting as a way of getting rid of the color casts that sometimes occur because of that type of light source. And the final white balance control is via the white balance tool which sits up in the toolbar at the top of the workspace. Now this particular eyedropper is designed for us to select an area in the image that is meant to be white or neutral grey and you can select that part of the image and automatically the feature will remove any colour casts associated with that part of the photo and change the colour so that the area that you've selected will be pure white or pure grey. In this instance I'm going to go back to as shot which is what was recorded by the camera when we were photographing. As we move down the panel on the right hand side you'll see that the first item that we come to is the exposure control and this enables us to establish what photographers call the white point. This is how bright the image is but in particular it controls the lighter tones in the photo. Now how much you adjust the white point is a really tricky issue. But thankfully if we go up to the histogram at the top of the panel and we just click on the highlight clipping box, the upward facing arrow that you see here, we get an indication in the photo itself, in the preview area, about whether parts of the image are being clipped based on our exposure slider. Now clipping means that there is detail being lost and you can see here as I move up the exposure control that there's some red areas appearing in our photo. These are areas that are being clipped so we just want to drag down our exposure control just till we get to a point where there's no clipping occurring. Don't worry if the image is getting a little bit too dark, we can adjust that later. Also notice that the upward facing arrow is now black which means there is no clipping occurring. If we go over to the shadow clipping warning you'll see that it is actually purple and this means that some shadow clipping is present in our image. If I go down to the blacks control and move that up you'll start to see that we get a blue warning 
occurring in our photo indicating that clipping is occurring in our image so again we want to drag that down until no clipping is occurring in the image and in this case we can't quite get it to a point where the shadows are clear just using the blacks slider so we'll push up the fill light slider as well in order to move some of the content and some of the tones more into the center of the histogram you can see how the shadow areas are actually being lightened in our photograph we also have another option here called recovery and recovery is designed for those highlight areas that are causing you problems and are perhaps a little bit blown out or a bit clipped and you can push up the recovery slider in order to rebuild that detail in the highlights we can now go down to the brightness slider and a lot of people find it a little confusing having both an exposure and a brightness slider but the brightness slider will brighten the mid-tone areas of our photograph and won't cause too much clipping you see we've introduced some clipping here and we might just use the recovery slider just to remove that clipping from the photo without actually darkening the whole image which would be the case if we use the exposure slider then we can control the contrast again keeping an eye on the clipping making sure that we don't lose any detail there as well in the highlights and the final three controls that we have here are clarity vibrance and saturation clarity if I drag it up you'll be able to see increases the local contrast in an area so it's especially useful if you're working with images taken on a misty day or an overcast day to help bring a little bit more zap will help define the details a little more sharply in your photograph. Vibrance and saturation both control the power or the strength of the color in the image. If I increase just the saturation first of all you'll see how all of the image, I'm just going to turn off the clipping here so that you can see just the colors, you can see how the strength of all the colors in the image uh, is increased proportionately. If I drag it down you'll see how it's reduced if I drag it right down you'll see that it's converted to just a black and white image so saturation applies a change to the strength of the color evenly across the whole of the photograph this is different to vibrance if I drag up vibrance we are actually only increasing the vibrance of the desaturated areas in the image so in this case you'll see more strength in the water and the sky but less change in the boats in the foreground which are already highly saturated so my suggestion is to push up your vibrance and drag down your saturation just a little bit in order to return a more realistic um, color to the photo so that's the main controls that we have in what's called the basic panel of camera raw if we flick to the next panel you see this is called detail and this controls the sharpness and the noise reduction in our photo now the first thing that you'll need to do before adjusting these controls is go to 100 percent so that we're looking at the actual pixels in the photo this helps us establish how the sharpness is being applied and how the noise reduction is being applied to the picture if we're looking at the image with anything less than 100% for the zoom level well then we'll only be getting an indication of how these features are being applied to the photo so I'm going to push the sharpening right up here the amount and you'll start to see a change in the grittiness I guess of the photo I then going to just push up my luminance or noise reduction until you start to see some of that grittiness disappear I like to work this way so I can get to see exactly how the luminance noise reduction is working and this is kind of the grittiness or the grayscale noise that's in our photo color noise reduction is the red green and blue pixels that sometimes appear in your photo especially when you're photographing at night and then they appear in the shadow areas or the black areas of your image so we don't have much of it in this really bright photograph I'm then going to bring down my sharpening and drop down the amount of detail in the photo just so that I have a smoother image and it's looking sharpened but not over sharpened so I'm just going to click done at that point and those changes will be applied back to my image back in the organized workspace if I was to click open instead of done then the image would have opened up into the editor workspace so you can see how the thumbnail has now been updated with the changes that we've made in the camera raw dialog
So you can see we've got three images actually sitting here in the organizer workspace. I'm going to select all three, but notice that only two of them, this one and this one, are raw files. The other one is a JPEG file. So let's just right click and go down to edit in Photoshop elements and the two raw files will be open into the camera raw dialog and the JPEG file will be opened into Photoshop. That way we can perform some adjustments to the couple of images that have been shot in the same location as the first one that we looked at and then open those into Photoshop Elements Editor Space as well. So here we are and the camera raw dialog has been opened and both images have been layered up on the left hand side and you can see the thumbnails here. The bottom image is the one that we've already adjusted and the one at the top is the second image shot on the same day. One of the interesting things you can see in the thumbnail is a small icon on the right hand side. This indicates that we've already done some adjusting to this photo. Remember we did some changes to colour temperature and exposure and colour uh, and sharpness as well. If we go up to the button at the top left hand corner of the dialog and click select all, then it's possible for us to actually synchronise the changes that we make in one photo across to the other photo. So for instance, if we go back through to the sharpness control that you can see here and just drop down the sharpness slightly, well then the change that we just made to this photo will actually be applied across to the other photo as well. This provides us with a way of making changes quickly and simply to a bunch of images photographed in the same location under the similar conditions. So take for instance all the photos that I photographed on this beach during the day and we could open them up into the camera raw dialog make a single change to an example image such as working with the white balance control here and then all of those changes will be synchronized across the other photos that have been layered up in the left hand column as thumbnails. Once we're happy with all the changes that have been made we can just click open images and this will then open the photos into the main editor workspace. You can see the JPEG photo that's sitting there already that was opened up from the organizer space and then the other photos will follow. So you can now see that we have all images open up in the main editor workspace. And if we just go down to the project bin, you can see the other photos here. And you can see that the raw files have now been processed and have been brought into Photoshop Elements. And these are now no longer raw files. These are now files that you can edit just as you would normally inside Photoshop Elements.